I think it's clear what happens now. Estella, you are expelled. I'm withdrawing her from your school. I'm expelling her. It's too late because I withdrew her first, so that can't be on a record. I'd said expelled. I, I, I'd already said it. Hadn't. Didn't. And might I say, your school seems to turn out horrible children with no creativity or compassion. Or genius. Almost 200 years ago, Horace Mann, the father of the modern public school system, went to Prussia, and he was impressed by how the Prussians schooled their kids. So who can guess what the Prussian focus was? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't a society filled with musicians, artists, inventors, and philosophers. Their focus was to build subordinate civil servants to the government and to industry. Obedient workers for the mines, obedient soldiers for the armies, and citizens who thought alike about major issues. To accomplish this, they basically separated kids by age, group, ability, and subject matter. Before the Prussians, this had not been seen before. The idea of teaching different subjects in different rooms for a limited amount of time and students changing rooms and subjects at the sound of the bell was all new. So Mann brought these ideas to America because this organizational model would work perfectly with the new industries recently taking off at the start of the American Revolution. 175 years later, we are still training our kids to be obedient soldiers and subordinate workers in mines and factories. In the modern classroom, I see my students unknowingly fighting against this every single day. So now we spend 180 days every single year teaching fish how to climb trees instead of allowing them to swim. But rather than promoting individuality, we put them in caste, labeling the students who read, write, and work math problems quicker with no interference or debate, they're gifted. But what about the students who can't sit still in class? Or what about the students who wants to sit in a corner and draw in their sketchbook all day and they're not paying attention in class? Or what about that kid who wants to tap, hum, and hears every random sound that flows with the rhythm of his heartbeat? These students are called lazy, unmotivated, distracted, and bad apples. But maybe their purpose was to be the next entrepreneur, graphic novelist, or music producer. These kids are just as gifted, but after years of failing tests, not doing homework, and receiving these negative labels on them from school, they start to believe. They start to believe what we tell them. They start to believe what we're teaching them. It's just hard for me to continue with that. They start to live up to being a bad apple, spoiling the good apples with classroom interruptions and bullying and refusing to do their work because they feel like it's a waste of their time or maybe they're just not interested. It's hard to say, but we focus on promoting the kids who just blindly listen to us and don't push back, don't ask questions, get their work done, sit quiet, sit still. Where are we allowing kids to be creative, be their own self, be individuals? It seems like we only focus on one or two types of intelligences. I feel like all of our kids, literally all of my kids, have amazingly special qualities about them but we don't allow the eagles to fly. Instead of allowing these young eagles to do and excel in what they're naturally talented in, we label them as low, underachieving, and troubled students. We give them IEPs and RTIs and medication to help them cope with the classroom cages that they're forced in every day, preventing them from flying. Because we only value the people who listen and follow our instructions that we tell them to climb. So we only value the climbers, the climbers of trees. But the funny thing is, even the highest climber looks up to a flying eagle. But we don't help the eagles channel their energy toward natural passions. We don't uplift their varying interests, styles, and perspectives. We don't give them the time and a platform to be original. We don't allow them to swim or to fly. Instead, we only teach them to memorize facts discovered by pioneers, creators, and reformers of the past, instead of allowing them to be the innovators of our future.